speed it up, I slow it back down. Oh, yeah, because I kicked off of it. I mean, like, why did they speed this up? I didn't know it was brown. They're technically supposed to be purple. Oh. They're grape flavored. I'm making the sour skittles. I ended up having to write a check to myself for all of my money. That's what it says on the check. <laughs> and then the amount column for the amount section just says all of it. <laughs> all of it. Did that work? I'm kidding. But only only a certain percentage of the money in the United States is actually actually exists in physical bills. A lot of it's just digital numbers. <clears throat> so nobody can actually have all the money out at the same time. Yeah. You have to separate the colors because if you put the water in them when they're all mixed up together, then the colors dissolve and stick to the other Skittles and then they just look gross. Especially the yellow ones, they get a lot of the purple stuck to them and the purple looks like brown. There's this great Chinese place near my house, and I love Chinese food. It is my favorite of all foods. I never eat inside there. You're gonna pay something like $8 plus a tip just to sit at a table, but you can go in and get a full meal in a takeout container for five bucks. And I, so I always come here and I take it out to my car and eat. It seems kind of sad shaking my car in a parking lot. There's nowhere good to eat around here. It's worth it. I don't really like eating in there anyway because the, um, the waitresses are very overly attentive. They'll pace back and forth past your table waiting for you to need water. They're like aggressively waiting your table. It makes me nervous. One time I was in this Chinese restaurant, I was maybe 12, so I was sitting on one side of the booth and my mom was sitting on the other side and behind my mom, these three Chinese waitresses were leaning against the wall just watching us. And I was talking and mid-sentence, a burp just came out. Unexpected, I had no idea that was coming. And they just kept staring at me and giggling. And every time I looked up, they would giggle. They should have been fired. That is a horrible way to treat your customers. I get almost obsessive about remembering that I'm trying to graduate college without a lot of college student debt. I'm, I do have a loan. Hoping I can pay off almost all of that loan before it starts collecting interest, which is six months after graduation. So I try really hard to save as much money as I can, but I have to, you know, make an effort to remind myself, you know, you gotta go out, do something once in a while, treat yourself to something. Have a nice meal. Buy yourself a new power tool once in a while. Once every five weeks, I have to go to the allergist and get stabbed with three different needles and injected with all the things that I'm allergic to. It's expensive too, crazy expensive. Every time the uh, every time the vials have to be replaced, they have to make new serum. It costs me like. 400 500 bucks my health insurance right now isn't great though so maybe uh once i get started in my actual career after college i'll get better health insurance and it won't be so bad they've learned how to consume raw power it's only a matter of time now i finally got a mask for wood dust i ordered it way back in may actually but it just took a long time to ship here and then it came in the mail and the package had a lot of chinese writing on it and it said uh it said apparel hat and I was like, what is this? I don't remember ordering a hat. I've been working on cutting these blocks down a little bit at a time, one row at a time. I'm just now getting to it pretty late in the month because the college class really picked up. So hoping to finish this up before the fall semester starts. So they start out this tall. This is one row of blocks, six blocks. And then I cut them down to about like this. I'm still not measuring them because I'm hoping to still have some variation in height. You can see they, they vary quite a bit. But you can kind of see there how much weight I'm taking off of this thing by trimming all these blocks down. I also think I'm going to end up getting different backing boards because those uh, the scrap beaded board that I was using, they're really thick and really heavy, way more than they need to be. My brother-in-law might have something I can use. We'll see. He just redid his bathroom with some kind of thin boards that he got a good deal on, so he might have some scraps or 
uh, might be able to just get me one because they're, I think he said they're like a dollar a panel. I've also been sanding off the, uh, the oil spots or whatever they are. I don't know. They're not mineral oil. I'm not sure what they are. I don't know if any of these have them. There's one. No, that's just dust. There we go. That, that stuff right there. I don't know where that came from. I still have no idea, but if I sand it, it doesn't take very long and it, it, it takes that off. So I'm re-sanding some of them, cutting all of them. I want to get this thing wrapped up before I get back on campus. Basically, this, this is one of the rejects. This is a really old post that I found out there we were going to burn and it's just, it's really really old so I didn't uh, end up using it so I cut it up into six sections. I put just a tiny bit of glue on the back of one of these. That's actually a little bit too much and then I take one of these blocks and I use this corner to to make sure everything is nice and squared up for cutting and I ma mash them together, hold them there for five or ten seconds and then stand them over here. I actually did end up breaking a few of them because I cut them too thin. One of them had so many nail holes through it that it wouldn't even hold together after I cut it. I'm cutting enough of these in half that I can take some of the scrap ones and replace the ones that broke. I just have to fully sand them smooth. I am quite ready to get this project done. Now the dark ones, like this one right here, they are actually... When I oil them, they turn really dark. I don't know if this one's been oiled or not. I need to see it in the light of my bedroom. I have a box right here. These are the the parts that I cut off. They're still nice wood, so I might be able to do something else with them eventually. But I've mastered the art of popping them off of the cutting hand holds. You twist them like an Oreo. Not that I actually eat Oreos, but I hear you're supposed to twist them if you want to separate them. I do eat the mint flavored ones. They have this generic brand. brand bland. It's called Twist and Shout. I'm sweating like crazy out here. The weather has been ridiculous. It's been in the upper 90s. Now I have my earbuds tangled up with my mask. We have two raccoons now running around. They have bestowed upon us a gift. I found this out in the yard. Interior vinyl and leather renewer. It's almost full, feels like. So now we can renew all of our leather. These are the ones that I was talking about. They get absurdly dark. Watch, they look about the same now. You'll see the difference after I oil them. After I oil this one anyway. There we go. Now it's out of focus. There we go. This is what they look like before you oil them. Lots of detail and stuff, but they're about the same level of darkness as these, which start out light. And then when I oil they, them, they get super dark, but I think it's fine. I think it's better to have them this way. All right, I have cut all of them. I have oiled all of them. They look awesome. There they all are. I have rearranged them many, many times, trying to make sure I have all the different uh, colors of wood dispersed evenly throughout the thing. And that there, I wanted to make sure there weren't any discernible patterns. See, right now I'm noticing that I have four of this same kind of block right here in a square, but I don't think that's too bad, because any way I rearrange it at this point, it's going to cause a problem somewhere else. Oh no. Oh no. Look, see, there's a pattern. we got a dark one in the center, and then these arranged in a plus sign around it, and then these on all four corners. So now I feel like I need to change that. I might change it, I don't know. The last thing I want is to glue all these things to the backing board and put it all together and be done, and then realize that there's a pattern on it that I'm gonna see every time I look at this thing. I got a new backing board for it. My brother-in-law had this uh, just really cheap, thin sort of plywood. He calls it Luon. I think it's a little bit lighter than these scrap beaded boards that I was using, and mainly it's in one piece. I couldn't find a piece of uh, beaded board scrap that was big enough to cover the whole thing, and I think having it in one piece is going to greatly help the stability of the thing. Especially since now I am hoping to do it without a frame. I was originally going to build a frame for it, mainly for stability, to, to keep it all from f bending and flexing, because if you look here, if I pick up this end, it does flex a little bit. But honestly, I don't think that's going to be a problem, especially considering it's going to be hanging on a wall. It's not like I'm going to be using it as a table and having legs on all four corners. So I don't think I need to worry about it flexing too much. All right, what is with my camera? It will not 
stay focused. Maybe if I light it up with my flashlight, is that better? Maybe it's just too dark. I did end up cutting a few extra of these because I broke some of these. And uh, besides that, I wanted more of this in the mix because these look the coolest. So some of the, the wider ones, the thicker ones of these, I cut them into two and added a few of those. And I now have one extra of these, which I won't be using. So at this point, the plan is I've, I've marked, I've made some markings on the backing board and I'm working out where I'm going to cut it so that uh, like on the edges here where there's a bit of a gap between them. So I have the board coming a bit short, not all the way to the edges of the squares. Okay, so I'm going to cut the backing board and this block right here and this block over here, they're a little bit thicker than all the rest, which is very convenient because I am going to put the holes behind them, the holes that I'm going to use to hang the thing, the holes that will go on the screws. And even more conveniently, these blocks are roughly 16 inches apart. 16 inches, if you know anything about construction, is how far apart the studs are in the walls. Even without a border, this thing is really heavy. So in order to make sure it doesn't fall off the walls, I want to make sure the screws that I hang it from are mounted directly into the studs. I found the studs in my wall using this little earth magnet. Somewhere around here, right there, there's a screw right there. And uh, that means that the stud is right here. And then I measured 16 inches across this way and there's another screw. So I know this is where the studs are. Conveniently, the studs seem to be centered behind the headboard of my bed. So in the backing board here, I'm going to put one hole right behind that block and one hole right behind this block. And then I'm even going to use my carving tool to carve out just a little indentation in the back of these blocks to make sure that when I hang it on the screws, the screw heads don't knock these blocks off. So that's why it's convenient that these two blocks are a little bit on the thicker side. So right now I'm about to move all of these blocks back over to this cardboard, which is where I was oiling them. It now looks like someone had an epic pizza party over here. And then I'm gonna make some more markings on this board and cut it hopefully sometime this week. I have this shirt that I, it's just a loose, it's an old button up shirt that I put on to keep the dust off of me. I'm gonna use this, uh, this big carving burr. I think this is the last one I bought. It's really fast and it, I need a pretty wide area for the, um, the indentation that I'm gonna make just to make sure this block is totally safe from the screws that are gonna be coming through the backing board to hold it up. I don't want the block to get pushed off by the screws. <laughs> I can't blow it off now when I have this mask on. So you can see I've, I've marked where I want the groove to be. I'm just going to carve right along there, make an indentation. Hopefully the blocks won't break. better than I thought, so I went ahead and made it nice and wide. Uh, hopefully I didn't carve out too much of it because there still needs to be plenty of surface area for the glue. And again, I want to make sure I'm clarifying. This block is not going to be supporting the whole thing. This indentation is not going to hang on the screw. The screw is going to hold the backing board up, but the head of it is going to stick out into the, this cavity. So we're just making room for the head of the screw to exist. There's not going to be any pressure here. I probably didn't need to explain that, but sometimes I feel the need to over explain on video. Not really because I don't think the viewers will understand, but because I don't think I did a very good job of explaining the first time. It's kind of hard to describe this stuff without showing it. There we go. You know, it occurs to me. I keep worrying about not having enough surface area for enough glue to hold the block on, but then I remember that I had a hard time removing these blocks from these with just that much glue. It was nice to finally be able to breathe while I was doing this. I did have a uh, just a strip of cloth that I would tie around my face, but that didn't work out too well. This mask is awesome. This is what's in the air when I'm doing it, and it's just, it. you can't, that's why the, 
you have to wear a mask. I probably shouldn't have been doing as much carving as I did before I got the proper mask. But I mean, I, I ordered it a long time ago and it just took a long time to ship. What can you do with this stuff? There's gotta be something you can do with this. Maybe I should mix it with glue and sculpt something out of it. It looks like I like never clean this workbench, but I have cleaned all of the dust out of it at least five times in the past six months. This is probably the last woodworking project I'm gonna to get to do this summer. I've actually done a few, mostly smaller ones. This is one of the bigger ones. I've marked where the, uh, the little grooves are gonna go, not grooves, holes. It's like a, a line hole. It's a line hole. It's gonna go right through there. And that'll give us a little bit of flexibility so we can shift the thing back and forth across the wall and get it centered where we want it on the screws. One day, man, one day I'm going to have my own workshop the whole thing will be mine, and I can have the whole thing set up for woodworking. I mean, I'll have some storage. I want to have a building about like what this one is, roughly the same size, and dedicate half of it to storage and the other half to getting stuff done. I'm actually doing this in the early afternoon, which is unusual, because usually I spend that time working my job. But right now, we have a meeting scheduled for two, and I don't really have anything I can work on that I can get done in that amount of time. So the point is, I'm just killing time until the meeting. People tend to call these tape measures. I don't do that. That doesn't make sense. It's a measuring tape. Sometimes I say it by accident. All right. So now I want to sand down all this this roughness. We shall just I just quick one once over with a piece of rough sandpaper will do it. And I need to sand down all the the ridges and uneven bits on here because there are some of those. And then we'll paint it with the black paint. I can't believe I'm almost done with this. I've been working on it off and on all summer. Sometimes I didn't get to work on it for weeks on end because I get too busy with college and work. It's been a stop and go project, but we're gonna finish it. Look at this, it's so much. I have it in endless supply. You know what, why don't I just go ahead and mark all the places that need to be sanded down. That way I can see it more clearly. This needs to go. And there's a there's a bump. It's like a speed bump right through here. A little bit right here. All right, that all leveled out very nicely, very quickly. It wasn't didn't take as long as I thought it would. And now all I have to do is go over these rough edges with a little bit of uh, low grit sandpaper, just to make sure they don't scratch up the walls or give anybody a splinter. Then we're ready to paint. Okay, so I'm going to paint the thing. I have a paint, I have a brush somewhere. As I talked about before, I need it black so that if you see through the cracks on those, it'll just look like black shadowy darkness. But the problem is, I don't want to cover the whole thing because if I cover the whole thing in paint, then I'm not going to get as good of a bond with the glue. The glue is going to be bonding to the paint and not to the wood. So I'm going to try to keep the paint. That's why I have these, these grid lines drawn. I'm going to try to keep most of the paint along these lines Kind of, you know, give myself a wide area, especially in the corners, uh, the, the intersections here. I'm going to put plenty, and then right in the center, like, where's a good square? Right along here, 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 and here is where the cracks tend to be. It's almost done. I did all the painting. This is what I ended up with. Looks weird. Probably went 
way overboard trying to cover as much background as possible while leaving as much bare wood as possible. But I think it makes sense. I think this is gonna work. And again, I gotta remember the glue is ridiculously strong. Even with the very tiny amount of glue that I put on the blocks to cut them, the glue was stronger than the blocks themselves. So a lot of the blocks ended up breaking while I was trying to pull them off of the board that I had glued them to and the glue held strong. This is going to be plenty of wood surface for a strong bond, it's good. I didn't end up needing as much paint as I thought. This container is mostly empty, feels like it's maybe a quarter still full. I did not even open the second bottle. So now I am going to transfer all of these back over there and uh, just kind of press them together and make sure they're all, all up against each other as tightly as they can be and all in an overall uh, nice straight edged rectangular shape. Because if you look here, I'm trying to hold the flashlight and do this at the same time. Like I can push all these together, but there are still gonna be gaps and some of them can turn a little bit. Here's a better example. This one has almost a round edge because of the way it cracked. So it's never gonna be completely perfectly against that block. Point is, I'm gonna try to get all of them collectively grouped together as tightly as possible and then start gluing them one at a time. All right, I think I've got it. They're all arranged very tightly. Looks like the pattern that I painted worked. It, uh, it basically leaves the center and then this, 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 and this bare. But all the cracks that are mainly in the center are covered and all this is covered. And all these big corner gaps are covered. And as you can see, this block and that block, they are lined up with the holes where the, uh, the, it's going to hang on the screws and they have the, uh, the cavity carved into them. So this will go right over that and that leaves room for the head of the screw and everything is perfect. And now I'm just going to grab a paintbrush and I am going to use it to apply the glue to the back of each of these blocks one by one by one by one by one by one by one and it's going to take a very long time. But when it's done, it shall be beautiful. Actually, it is beautiful. This is pretty much just what it's going to look like. Everything else that's going to be done is not going to change the appearance at all. Except that it will be hanging on a wall. I bought these lamps a long, long time ago. Many years ago for stop motion animations. They still come in handy once in a while. not going to go all the way to the edge with the glue because it will squish out just a little bit and I don't want a lot of glue going out on top of the black. And I'm not going all the way to the edges on this one because the edges overhang off of the backboard. And then I'm just going to press it down for several seconds to make sure it stays in place as I start picking up the blocks around it and gluing them. This is going to take a while, but it's kind of fun getting a nice even coat of glue. I feel like I've seen characters use glue with paint brushes in old cartoons, and I've never done that, and it is surprisingly satisfying. Another reason to not put glue all the way to the edge is so that I don't accidentally wipe it on the tops of uh, connecting blocks when I put this one back down. Just about everything in old cartoons was satisfying, especially food, bread, pizza meat. You know what else is satisfying? Thunderstorms. I love thunderstorms. Yeah, see I can see the glue squishing out a little bit, just a little bit. Let's see if I can get that on camera. Right down there. Yeah, you can see that. The dry is mostly clear, so it shouldn't be a huge issue, but I want to try to minimize that. As a 
if I have to show you what it looks like when glue squishes out from under something. It's part of the experience. You must experience the squishing of the glue. It's part of the experience of woodworking. The squishing of the glue. That sounds like a, a name for a book or a movie or a band or a dog. Ooh, a musical. It would make a good musical. This is nice. This is very nice. Very nice way to spend the evening. Communing with the glue. I feel like sometimes wood glue doesn't dry very quickly unless it's pressed between pieces of wood. It's like the pressure activates it or something. That might just be me. There are all these little pieces of red fuzz from one of the rags that I was using to oil these. I'm gonna remove those as I go, but they're going to be in there. They've made their mark. White fuzz, too. There's probably a specific kind of cloth you're supposed to use for this kind of thing. There's the one with the cavity for the screw heads. Want me to explain that one more time? Should I go over it again? Probably gonna leave this thing sitting for like 48 hours before I even try hanging it up. I have to actually remove this one so that I can extract this one. Isn't it fun to experience this process with me? You know what else is fun? This is the first one I get to put glue on the entire thing because it's not hanging off of the edge of the backboard. Isn't that exciting? This is so exciting, guys. I should have made this a live stream watching me brush glue on wood blocks. That's fun, right? That would be so much fun. Look at the dramatic lighting on my hand. Ooh, the excitement. But, but there's a square bubble. Can you see that? It's a rectangular bubble. It's weird, man. Weird stuff. This glue's going pretty far. I might not actually need the second bottle of wood glue that I bought today. I mean, I will eventually, so that's fine. Give it CPR. <laughs> art is usually worth more after the artist is dead, but what if the art is dead? Well, that's just depressing. I wonder if you can get wood glue in like a paint bucket sized bucket. You probably can something similar to that. I saw a bigger bottle at uh, Walmart today when I went to buy more and you know it was a better price per ounce but I decided not to buy it because the bottle itself was so big it would be inconvenient to use. I mean I guess I could have poured it into a, another container. This is the most entertaining video you've watched all week. I know. I just know it. That's two out of eleven rows down. Both of our cats are outside right now in the thunderstorm. I don't know why. I just wanted to go out there. Oh no. See, I'm paranoid I'm going to lose track of the orientation. It goes like this. Yes, we're good. I mean, this thing ought to have a really long life. I mean, I think it's cool. I don't think there's much I could do to make it more cool, which means I'm not going to get tired of it and think, oh, that's old, I, sh I should just display my new stuff. And if I get rid of it, somebody else will want it. So as long as it holds together, it's probably always going to be hanging somewhere for the next, I don't know, 50 years. I imagine I'll have it in my house for a very long time. You know, this is going to be impossible to dust. I guess I could go along with it with a toothbrush once in a while. I wonder if this glue is waterproof. These, I don't know if I mentioned that, these right here with the, uh, the, the exterior wood texture from where the, the rain and wind just removed layers of the grain over time. And this one right here, I didn't oil those. I oiled one and it turned a really, really dark color. And I didn't like that, so I wanted, I wanted them to stand out better, so I left those dry. Everything else is oiled. You know, I could hide something in here. I could hide something behind all these blocks. Or I could carve more cav- ooh, that's a good one. Carve more cavities in the backs of some of them, like I did for these, and hide things in them. I'm quite happy with myself. This is, I think, the first big woodworking project that I've made for myself. I made some smaller things. I'm actually trying to think now what I've even made. I made this spoon, and I made this. It sits on my desk. But there weren't a lot of things I could think of to make that I even wanted. So... This is something good, because I need something to hang on my wall. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. 
See, I'm looking right down through there, and I see just a tiny bit of, like, the backboard where, like, the paint just scratched off. Maybe if I get a really skinny paintbrush or, or a toothpick, I can just put a little, a little bit of paint right there. Okay, I think I'm just going to finish it now, and I will pick up the camera again when I'm ready to hang it. Okay, I'm not done yet, but I have some thoughts. I am down to this row. I'm done down to this row, so I have one, two, three, four rows to go. I have some things I want to point out. First, a few of them still look like they could use more coats of oil. This one right here, it's a little bit, a little bit pale right there. This one right here looks oiled in the center, but the rest doesn't look oiled at all. But that's no problem, because I can go back and do that. This one right, too, right here, too, right along the edges. The real trouble with that, uh, the reason why I was hoping to not have to oil at all after putting it together, is because of these that I said I didn't want to oil because I wanted them to stay light colored. Uh, this one right here was up against one that I oiled and it kind of soaked in a lot of that. So you can see it got dark on the edge. Not a huge deal, I guess it's fine. It's a little bit of a bummer, but I want to avoid that happening as much as I can. The other thing I wanted to point out is some of these, Let's see if I can find a good example here. On a handful of them, it looks like they might not have been cut evenly. Like the, the blade was at an angle, which shouldn't be happening. It's fine for this project. Kind of adds to the carefully randomized chaos, but it's not supposed to happen. So I should really look into that and try to keep that from happening again. Figure out what was going on with the saw. Ah, one other thing that came to mind is that wood contracts and expands. Uh, at different seasons of the year. So as I was putting these together and realizing how tight some of them were when I was sliding them back in, it occurred to me, what if they expand and then start like pushing each other off? But a quick internet search told me that they expand in the summer and shrink in the winter. So these should all just shrink and create more space for each other. So it's actually perfect that I'm doing this in the summer instead of the winter. It's the next morning, I'm getting ready for church. Just wanted to show you this whole thing started because this post on this thing i think it's sewer related broke and uh so i had to replace it and when i replaced it i don't know i guess i just cut open the old post just to see what it looked like inside and then i had the idea dude check this out the storm last night blew over the trampoline these are the ones from that post in our yard that broke uh, these and these are from the post from my grandfather's house, which was there when he moved in. And these, not actually sure where these are from. I think they're from a post we were going to burn. It was probably used for something, but I don't know what. The wood glue doesn't dry as clear as I thought. I mean, I guess it is clear, but it's also slightly brown tinted. Come to think of it, when I was a kid, I remember now, I had a bottle of wood glue, and I realized it looked like that. I remember this now. And then I took it over here because this this used didn't this doesn't used to be my room, but it used to be a room this was what we called the art center and we would just do all kinds of crafts here. So anyway, I poured a little bit of it on the desk in a few places because this desk is really smooth and you can just peel it right off. And then I tore it up into little pieces and I put them in an envelope and gave them to my sister and told her they were boogers. I don't remember how that went over. I hung it up. I hung it up and it's so epic. I was gonna film putting in the screws and hanging it on the screws, but I didn't even do that. I just wanted to hang it up there and I'm glad. I am so happy. It looks really professional to the extent that it's almost hard to convince myself that I made that. Like I've been working on it over the past three months or so, but just suddenly seeing it on a wall, especially borderless, it just looks like, I don't know. I've never done anything like that before. It's very clean, and if you come around to the side, then you can see the backing board, but you have to come way around. Well, I guess you can see it a little bit right there. Maybe I'll paint that black, I don't know. The great thing is, it will be fairly easy to uh, to pull it down. I can, maybe in a few months, I'll pull it down, lay it back down, and apply more oil, because eventually it'll probably need it. And then when I do that, I can go ahead and flip it over and paint the edges of the backboard black. That won't be difficult at all. I'm just gonna stand here and stare at it for a while now. 